Good afternoon. Welcome once again to my daily chat. <laughs> this is episode 456. And the topic today is actually taken from an article I posted and I want to talk about it in detail. More detail than the article posted. So the topic today is 20 gentlemanly traits or behaviors. Actually, it's actually 20 behaviors of a gentleman, but I'm calling it 20 gentlemanly traits. Um, conduct becoming is the subtitle. So before I get into the topic and explain, let me introduce myself and what these are about, in case you've never seen my broadcast before. My name is Barry Selby. I am a best-selling author, speaker, and relationship attraction expert, helping strong, successful women find balance in love, life, and business. I'm also a passionate champion for the Divine Feminine, which is one reason why I'm doing this talk today. And every day I do a talk called Messages for the Masculine to Inspire the Feminine Heart, and this is episode number 456. And again, the title today is 20... Well, 20 behaviors of a, of a gentleman is what it's called, but actually I'm calling it 10 to 20 gentlemanly traits because it's shorter. So let's get started. So if you're in my broadcast for the first time, feel free to comment along, respond, tap the screen, whatever those things are you do when you're watching broadcasts. If you feel like you want to share it out with anybody in particular, please do so, but don't blame me if they don't like it. Um, <laughs> if you want to post it in groups, you can do that as well. And if you're watching this on YouTube, this was on Facebook Live first, and that's why I'm doing it live on Facebook and then reposting and repurposing to YouTube and my podcast. Okay, that's enough of the logistics, let's get into the topic. So I'm going to go through the 20 different topics listed. I have disagreement on a few of them, just to be up front, and I also have deeper perspective on some of them as well. So I'm going to jump right in and go with the order, and they're in the order they're written. If you want to read the article itself, it's on, it was on my wall, um, I put it on my wall yesterday, I believe. Actually, I'll really link it in the comments below just so you can refer back to if you want to. So I'm not... These are not my, own not my own 20. I may come up with some extra ones in the topic in today's talk. But these are 20 from the article that I read, and I'm going to repurpose them and re-explain them so you know, that I'm, uh, you know that I'm plagiarizing in a way, just so we're clear, okay? All right, so the first one. Um, again, 20 behaviors becoming a gentleman, or 20 behaviors of a gentleman. This one is really simple. It's opening doors. And there's some other caveats, com other ones coming up, but I want to speak to this one, specific specifically expand on this one, is we have, a tr we have a challenge in this modern society that, um, one, men forget, and, wi and two, women don't always respond. And this is one of these dichotomies, so I'm, I may have to do some deeper investigation in these, top in these top 20 points as I go through them, but certainly up front right now with opening the doors, it's, it's, my, it's my nature, partly because, and again, I'm, I'm, okay, let me preface by saying, in case you don't know, I'm English, not American. And in England, it's kind of more naturally in the culture, at least it was when I was a kid and as a young adult. I've been over here since my 20s, so I don't know if the, mod if the modern millennial type culture there is any different than one over is here. So this may still have bearing, it may not, but I was raised in a culture, even though we were working class, where respected women was part of the culture. So for these, for me, mostly it's a second nature. And so in this one, as an opening doors, absolutely it was something, something I still do. Um, there's something about opening the door. Now, I have one caveat on that, personally, which is if I know I'm entering a space that is maybe hostile, like very crowded or very challenging to get through, I may let my, my woman, the woman we're with, know that I'll go first just to sort of create a safe space for them to follow behind versus assume that. But normally I'll open the door to invite them to go through first because that's respectful. Now, as I said before, there are some challenges on both sides of this conversation. Men forget and women don't always accept or receive. And in this one, there's a lot of blowback on this. And for a lot of women, they feel like when men open the door for them, that somehow it's demeaning or um, belittling to them because it's like making you, make you feel like you're weaker. Now, I'm getting into that more later on, but I want to let you know up, up front. If a man is opening the door for you as a respectful gesture, it's nothing to do with um, stature, power, strength, or any of that stuff. It's about respect. And I say, well, it, that's the way I would say receive it, period. Even if the man doesn't know he's doing it that way, take it that way for your own benefit. So that's that one. That's number one. Number two, and this is a, I didn't talk about this a while ago. The, the, t the, the point made is being on time. Um, this, is gonna, this can get messy. <laughs> First of all, I did a talk about green keeping last week that was a powerful reminder about how you can build your own self-esteem and self-approval and self-acceptance by keeping your agreements. That's not going to be the theme today, but I recommend you go watch that broadcast as well. I might, if I remember, go back to go back and link it to this one. But I just want to let you know that's a thing to think about. But in the means of being on time, it's, it's again, back to respect and honorable re behavior. Because even if you know, gentlemen, even if you know that a woman's going to be 20 minutes late because she's always 20 minutes late, 
doesn't mean you should show up 20 minutes late unless she asks you to. If you have an agreement to pick her up at 8 o'clock, don't show up at 8.20 because you know she's going to be ready then. Be there at 8 o'clock. She may or may not surprise you and be early. You don't know that. But respect calls you to be on time. So that's, that's, that's my... Um, what's I'm looking for? Short answer to that one. I don't go much deeper on that, but I'll save it for later. Third one, which is another one that's interesting. I was, talk- I was here with a friend of mine um, on Sunday. We went out for lunch. And I did this to her, and it sort of threw her a bit, which is um, that the man walks curbside or walks closer to the curb than she does. Now, this is, this is steeped in medieval history and other things, too, and I'll get into that in a moment. But the reality was is when I did that, well, literally what I did was I, I sort of I, I took, I stopped where I was walking. I was, let me say this another way. We were walking down the street together as we came out of the parking structure, and I was on the, the other side of her. And so I basically stopped as she went ahead and then came around the other side of her on the curb side. And it sort of threw her for a second. She's like, what? And I said, just remembering to be the right place as a gentleman. Because this is the one I want, this one I was I personally have forgotten a lot of times, so just be transparent. But I'm remembering more and more now. So medieval times, as I mentioned, there was a, um, and it's actually, this is actually from England, I believe, more than America. So it was the other way around. But there's two things that this is based in history of. One of which is, in olden times, in the narrow um, walkways between the houses that couples walked along, the man would always stay close to the middle because he didn't want her to get dumped on because the um, residents in the houses would throw their, bu- their buckets of crap and shit out the window, upper windows, and it would drop down to the middle because that's where the drains were. By him standing on the curbside or towards the middle of the road for her, he protects her from getting dumped on. Now, ideally, he doesn't get dumped on either, but that can happen. So it's one of the medieval uh, origins of this piece. The second one, and this actually was um, why in England we drove on the left-hand side of the road. Because the majority of people in England, most of them, I should say most of the men who were in England who were swordsmen were right-handed. And so to be on the left-hand side of the road, I should make sure it's the right word in my head, yes, and being on the right of, my, of the woman... He could draw his sword and protect her honor without her being in the way. So you could actually get in front of her with a sword and, and parry and, and spar or whatever with the, with the challenge from across the street, across the way. So being that most men are right-handed, the sword was carried on the left because most men would, carry the, would, cross, cross, would cross, draw their sword to their right hand, which means having the woman on his left, again, English rules, not American rules. <laughs> so he would be curbside or be closer to oncoming traffic so that would he be able to defend her honor that's two different reasons why walking curbside is important now on another point it's also safer because if something happens or someone opens a door he's going to block hopefully and protect her as well so even in modern times that's value so that's that's, that's a three for for that one so that's number that's number three number four um he offers his jacket and this one is one of those ones where it's how romantic. It's actually one of those ones that feels even more romantic than the other ones do. I don't know why. They're all valuable for me. But if it's chilly or if it's cooler, a gentleman offers his lady his jacket to keep her warm. That's it's like, that to me is common sense. So, enough said. If you have any questions about that one, ask me and I'll, I'll go back deeper. But it's, it's straightforward to me, very simple. Uh, number five, and this one is really scarce nowadays. Not so much as it used to, not, not as common as it used to be, which is he helps her sit. So you're going out to dinner, sitting at a table, and nowadays, thankfully, a lot of the weight stuff would do it, which is really wonderful, is that when you sit down, first of all, gentlemen, you don't sit down first. You at least stand at the table to let her sit. And this actually, I'll do a, I'll do a PS for that one because it's not in this, in this list. So this is one of my added ones at the same, second part two of five, uh, five, number five. So he will actually either help her sit by having a go at the table, pull the chair back, let her sit down and scoot in, or at least have the wait staff do it if they are already offering to do so. Don't fight him for it. You can if you want to, gentlemen, but, do, but here's the thing. You never sit down first, and this is a PS that's not in the list. So you don't sit down first, and the extra piece I want to give you, gentlemen, is if a lady gets up to go to the restroom, be a nice guy and stand up, at least respect her doing that. Now, she may just say, no, no, don't bother, which is fine. If you don't, that's okay. But if you don't even offer, shame on you. So standing up when she leaves the table is a sign of respect, and also standing up when she comes back to the table is a sign of respect. Now, if you're in agreement with that's not an issue anymore, that's fine, but it's not something you want to do by default. It's nice to show the, um, it's nice to show the standard, the, the intention, the respect you want to give her. 
So there's that one. Number six is number six is being courteous. And this is in the context of just using please and thank you. I don't know how many people I've talked to where they don't even remember to, uh, to ask by putting please or saying thank you afterwards. Thankfully, I'm in a group of people right now. We're going through some major work, and I'm getting thanked a lot because what, what we're doing right now, because I've taken over a lot of a project for some people. But it would be harder to do if that thank you wasn't coming. And this actually is both sides of the gender. This is not just for the gentlemen; it's for ladies too. It's using please and thank you in conversation, in context, to show respect. So that's being courteous. That's number six. Number seven. This is kind of like a. a, a, a part three, I guess, of number five, <laughs> which says help us sit. Number seven is offers his seat. Now, I have been riding public transit quite a bit because I've got a car right now. And so oftentimes when I get on the get on the, the bus, I'll, I mean, oftentimes I would just stand, I don't even bother sitting because other people can deserve the seats. But when I see people sitting in the seats, young kids, young boys, even men who sit in the seats when a woman is standing or comes up and they don't think about, don't even look at her. In fact, they'll, hide, they'll avoid looking at her because they don't want to give up their seat. It's sickening. It's just not, it's just a weakening respect. It doesn't appreciate it. So that one, that one bugs me. So offering a seat, absolutely. This is another one, um, number eight, which is offering, offering his arm. Now, if you get it socially with somebody, this is not necessarily for sexual relationships, this is for social, is to be, to be a gentleman, offer your arm to her so that she can rest her hand on your arm and walk with you. It's very elegant. I mean, it's an old, old fashioned thing as well. Um, but it shows a sense of respect as well. And this is not about um, romantic gestures necessarily, but it is a sign of respect and appreciation. So offering his arm is a genuine sign of respect and appreciation, which all of these are. Number nine, he has table manners. Oh, this one bugs me. (laughs) Quite a few of these do. Um, When I see people who don't know which piece of cutlery is for what, now, again, I'm, I was born and raised working class. I did not have an upbringing that was um, polished and refined and had you know, silver utensils. It was just a working class family. But still, we, I still I know these things. It's like, come on. You know, the, the one thing that's different between America and England, by the way, is in England, we use a knife and fork as God intended. <laughs> fork in the left hand, knife in the right hand, you cut and eat as you go. In America, for some reason, especially I've seen it out here a lot, is... Now, maybe you don't do this, but a lot of Americans I know do this is where they will actually get the knife and fork and they will switch hands, cut the food, and then use their right hand with the fork to eat the food after they cut it all up. First of all, for me, that makes the food go cold faster, so it doesn't make sense to me. Secondly, it's almost like the way kids, people raise their kids. We cut the food up for them. And I don't know if it's a traditional adult thing, so maybe I need to be corrected on this one, but I definitely feel that having... Um, knowing what's what on the table is a useful skill for polite society. <laughs> so I'll leave it like that. So that one is another one I would say that is definitely um, a simple thing, but it makes a big difference. Now, moving on. Um, number 10, and this is, this is actually ties together with helping us sit and the table manners and please and thank you as well. Because this is all about going to dinner in a way. These are all like around the same topic. So number 10 the, the, the point we've written as being not, as not rude to, to service and wait staff I suppose say to be respectful because I want to bring the positive spin but there's no need to be rude disrespectful or blunt to the wait staff, the bus boys the bartender, or any of these people because they're doing their job and if they screw up then screw it up, you could be kind to them at least so having a degree of respect and appreciation for what they're doing as a job but also as helping you that's worth doing. So for me, that's another sign of being respectful. And a gentleman is respectful. Number 11, I have a disagreement with, and I'm going to, to explain what that one is. It's written as, pick up the check, picks up the check. And this one is a bit of a quandary nowadays, because now in, in, mod, in modern times, in current culture, men and women are earning different amounts of money. It used to be, the, you know, this is back in the 50s, women weren't working yet a lot of times. So they were basically had no money of their own unless they were given it by their parents. The gentleman would always escort and would take pick up the tab. It's still important, yes, I agree with it being important. However, I wouldn't make that a hard and fast rule anymore. Now, if... Let me, let me back up and say one thing. On the first meeting, yes, the man picks up the check, absolutely. 
and again, this is not necessarily about romantic dates, this is about going out together socially, um, as business connections, all these different things. The gentleman always offers to pick up the check. Now, it may be something where it is a meeting that you've both chosen to do, so you might, have a, you might have to go Dutch and split the check, but have that in mind. Again, I'm not sure what to say this, this for all of them. All the ones I'm talking about are suggestions, invitations, and recommendations you want to keep in mind, because for so many people, these are like, say what? You should do this? I'm saying keep it in mind, and in most cases, yes. So that's, so that's moving along. Uh, number 12 is being attentive. <sighs> Nowadays, with a smartphone swiping, swiping, and tapping, and all that sort of stuff, keeping attention for both genders is a challenge. I recommend if you're going out with friends, or if you're going on a date, your phones either stay in your pocket, under the table, face down, or some other way where they don't distract you. Put them on Do Not Disturb, turn them off, Unless you've got babysitter issues, something like that, it's a different story, but put it where you don't need to look at it. When you're out with somebody socially or in a, in a dining environment, what are you doing? Have the conversation with the people, not with the screen. I think it's kind of clear, black and white with them, but it really comes down to this, that being attentive means being with the person you're with, not with your smartphone you can do anytime you want. So show some respect. Again, respect, dignity, gentlemanly conduct. And but that one, again, for both genders, men and women can both learn from this one. Being attentive, mean, meaning that you put your phone down, spend time with your person, you get to know them, you talk, have conversation. That is absolutely a, um, hmm, almost becoming a lost art because of all the smartphone boom we've heard in the last 10 years. Number 13. I mentioned back at the beginning, number two was about being on time, I mentioned agreements. This is another part of that, which is number 13, which is keeps his word. A gentleman keeps his word, so when he says something, he'll do it. And he, if he doesn't say it, he won't do it <laughs> on, the, on the inside, uh, the inverse, which is really the truth, is that a man's word is his bond. And I wouldn't necessarily have, say don't do contracts when you have that, but I am saying definitely focus on keeping, for men, keep your word. So don't agree to something unless you're willing to do it, and you're going to do it. Simple, powerful reminder that a man's word means something, because for a lot of people it doesn't mean anything anymore. Not in my book. A man's word is his bond. And so keeping his word is, is fundamental for a man being a gentleman. So that's mine too. Number 14, on the other side of this, is keeps confidence, keeps secrets. So if you want to tell him something in confidence, or you took something privately, unless he asks you if it's okay to share it, he will not share it. Unless you tell him, of course. But the reality is that if you keep confidence, if you have a conversation with him, he doesn't go ahead and go, boy, this was so, what so-and-so told me to his friends. Not cool. So you keep respect, you keep restraint, and you keep secrets. That's out of respect again. Um, a little bit deep on the same thing, number 15, is there's no kiss and tell. And this is more about romantic relationships, but it's the same level of confidence in the fact is that, gentlemen, if you're having a great time with a woman, you have a great relationship and everything else, you're not talking to your guys about how well built she is or about what her foibles are or why she doesn't do why she isn't good in bed or whatever that is for you. You don't share it with your buddies. Don't kiss and tell. Keep privacy, keep respect, keep that boundary strong. Um, number 16. This one's an interesting one too. I don't know why it's on the list anyway, because it's on, to me it's like it should be a default, is and it sounds strange, and I'm gonna say it what it is. Number 16 is no hitting women. And Pami goes, you need to write that one down? And it says in, it says in the description, um, there's no hitting women on any occasion no matter how alignment she is, unless it's to, in, to save somebody else or something like, you know, you don't hurt them unless you're trying to protect them from hurting somebody else. This one's all messed up. So I don't agree with it personally. Um, I, I, sorry, I don't agree with this being in there because as far as I'm concerned, there is no hitting women. A man hits a woman, doesn't know how to communicate. That's my statement. Now, there are situations beyond exemption where it might be something with, where it's so violent it's gotten to that point. But for a man hit woman, has to have extremely just cause to do it. Because I don't agree, I don't agree ever happening otherwise. So that's my pet peeve on that one. Um, number 17. Um, this one's an interesting one because it's something that, with the way that, that restaurant service has been happening, it could be more of a, more of a challenge. This one is um, waits for others to get, get served before eating. And this is one of those ones where I've seen it go both ways. And certainly if you've got co food courses coming and it's been a long time after the first course arrives for the next people, sorry, when some people get served or the other people get served, 
then it might be like, you know what, go ahead and eat. And I would recommend if you're, if you're the one waiting, be cautious and be aware of how long you have to wait. You don't want your friend's food to go cold just to wait for you. There's a, there's a boundary in there about you want to respect that boundary. So please, um, yes, be polite and wait. Or certainly be polite and start waiting for your friends if, if their food doesn't arrive yet and yours has. But also, if they say go ahead and eat, it doesn't hurt to go, are you sure? Just to double check, you know, and just go, oh, thank you. It's like waiting to eat and, and diving in because that's, that's almost slap in the face, you know? So respectful. Number 18. A, a gentleman is honest. Now, this one, <laughs> I mean, it has importance, and I, I just say a caveat to show it right away. So being a gentleman requires him to be in integrity, to be authentic, and to be honest. It means he speaks his truth. Now, Ladies, if you ask him if you, if you look fat in that dress, don't do that. Because <laughs> he's going to try and be honest. And if you, do, if you don't look slim in that dress, he might be challenged trying to answer that without um, crucifying himself or getting slapped in the process. So being honest has a little bit of a framework around it for me. Because there's so many people I know, they want to hear what they want to hear. They don't want to hear the truth. So for me, being honest has some... Um, uh, massaging to it but generally speaking being honest is absolutely one of my go to's because I'd rather be honest than tell a lie because it's so much harder to remember the lies I've told so being honest is actually easier so remember that one being honest number 19 coming down the home stretch um, gets stuff done a gentleman knows how to do stuff so he knows how to change a wheel on a car he knows how to check the oil level he knows how to reboot your computer he also knows how to fix, maybe knows how to fix some things on the smartphone. He knows how to put WD-40 on, on hinges. I just did that yesterday on, on the, the, the front door. Those sort of things which seem so natural for most men, for some men apparently are not. So getting stuff done means he knows how to handle things. And if he doesn't know, he'll figure it out. I actually had th- two things to do today, which I didn't know how to do them before. I was like, I've got to figure out how to do these. And so I just went online and found out how to do them. Getting things done is a... Um, not requirement, but it's a fundamental tool in the tool belt of a man who's a, who's a gentleman. He knows how to get, he doesn't, doesn't shy away from doing the dirty work or doing any work for that matter. So getting stuff done is another fundamental. And the last one on this list, which is number 20, is um, protects the defenseless women and children. This one's also another one that has a little bit of a f- uh, um, flexibility to it. Because yes, he will step forward as a warrior, as a masculine man, as a gentleman. He will step forward and defend honor. Um, there's a great line from um, uh, the Kingsman, where he says, man- manners maketh the man. And in a lot of ways, it had that sense of authority and dignity and, pa- and, and power that men had. And so I really feel that, in a way, protecting the defenseless is true. But the thing about it is it's not necessarily protecting the defenseless, it's protecting honor. So I'm going to reword it as the um, gentleman protects honor, particularly of his lady, of children, of any woman, basically. He doesn't let women get denigrated, put down, insulted, or hurt, even if they're not his partner, because he is one who protects those who may not be, may not be thinking about protecting themselves. So if a woman's being insulted by a man, I've talked about this one actually last week as well, about standing up as a gentleman and not letting men denigrate women, this whole Me Too conversation about respecting women. This is one of those where for me protecting the defenseless is also protecting those that may not be there to defend themselves. So yeah, protecting honor. Yes, Adriana. And thank you for I see you in my broadcast. So it is about respecting honor because for me there's a, a um, especially when you're hanging out for, for me as a man, for other men, when you're hanging out with the boys and they're talking about women, the women aren't there necessarily to defend themselves or are not close by to hear what's going on to respond. And when it's five guys insult commenting about one woman, she may have the, the ability to defend herself and feel um, strong enough. So men, be willing to step out of the herd, out of the pack, and stand true to your dignity, stand true to your honor, stand true to your values, and defend her honor. That, for me, is a powerful one. So I'm changing number 20 to, to protect and defend her honor. So that's that. So that's the 20 that I have. I'll post the article again in the comments of this broadcast because some of them make sense and this is my interpretation of them. Um, There's so much. I've I've done at least half a dozen broadcasts over the last year about gentlemanly conduct 
and it's one of the things I mentioned where gentlemanly conduct was an endangered species, or should say, I think a gentleman was being an endangered species, and gentlemanly conduct was be, was becoming a um, a lost art. And this, these twenty points, are a good starting point for men to stand up, to step up, to grow into, and to take these on. Um, I think that's really what I want to say. I, I don't have any other ones like running in, jumping in. But the, 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 I think I'll say this, the summary for me, the underlying fundamental piece is that one of the biggest qualities that a gentleman, a gentleman um, embodies is respect for women. Um, Adriana, I posted the article yesterday, I think. I'm going to repost the article in the comments of this broadcast when I sign up, so you better watch it, better read it there. So I'm just, I went through the 20 myself with my own caveats on a couple of them. But I want to say just again, the fundamental one, that for me that the overarching um, behavior of a gentleman is respect for women. That period, and, for, and I'd say that at least 10 or 15 of these that I, the list that I read out come under that same heading. Respecting women is a gentleman's prerogative, a gentleman's conduct or a, a code of conduct and a definite um, willingness to stand up for those who feel he needs to protect, which is what number 20 was, by the way. I was just having a, th a second thought passing through how there's this feeling that men have to stick together and defend each other, like the locker room where like, you keep you defend each other, and I'm calling bullshit on that. There's too much of that, um, it's okay to judge and blame and, and, and denigrate others from behind the safety of your little man group. Maybe because I haven't been in many man groups, so I can, I can say this. I've been in outside of that, and I, a lot of times I felt like that is so um, limited in way of living. And so having respect for your elders, having respect for those who serve you, having respect for women, having respect for each other, having respect for others is a fundamental skill, gift, requirement, tool, and behavior of a true gentleman. I think that's it. Okay, so um, this is actually the first time I've done a broadcast where I actually had a script. <laughs> I mean, bullet points are all script down notes. But basically, normally these are free form. And, and by the way, if you did watch my last two broadcasts, which is 455 and 54, I talked about dating apps and matchmaking, and I dissected them slightly. So I invite you to watch those if you didn't really watch them. Um, this, as I mentioned, is one of my daily broadcasts called Messages to the Masculine to Inspire the Feminine Heart. These re will re be repurposed and showing up on my business page on Facebook, which is barryselby.author. You can follow me along there, by the way. Also goes onto my YouTube channel, which is Barry Selby, and the playlist is Messages from the Masculine. And now they're going to my podcast, which is an iTunes um, called Messages from the Masculine, the name of the podcast. On iTunes, you can subscribe there and download them all as well in audio format. Um, quick plugs and promotions. It, if you're a man who's getting stuck in this area, reach out, I've got some ideas and maybe it'll help you. If you're a woman who wants some help in the area of love and relationships, you know that I offer this every time. Um, I do offer da my daily invitation is a, um, what I call a discovery session, a free complimentary 30 minute talk to you and me to see where you are, see if I can move you forward and also invite you to maybe work with me if it lines up, only if it won't lines up. Um, you can get that by going to barryselby.com forward slash chat, easy to find, I'll put the link in there as well in the comments. Um, I put my self-love in there too because I'm big passion. I'm promoting the self-love piece right now. I'm part of a giveaway and I put the stripped down version of the written part of my self-love practice in there as a gift. But I have the full blown one which has the self-love guide as well as two um, recorded by me. Uh, audio meditations morning and evening that go with this in a much bigger way so you can just do the work. And you can get them on my website which is barryselby.com forward slash self-love. And I'll put the link in the comments for that as well. Um, I think that's it. This is a Friday broadcast, so I'll be doing some casual stuff this weekend. I believe I'll still do my broadcast at 5 p.m. Pacific time. Should be ironed up. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, please message me. If you want some support, you know to find me. You can go to my website. And, uh, and again, I'll put the link to the 20 Behavior article in the comments below as well. Thanks for joining me, as always. Thanks for, the thanks for playing along. Thanks for watching, saying hi, and interacting. I will see you again tomorrow at 5 p.m. Pacific time. And uh, as always, take care of yourself, and I'll see you again soon. Bye.